last poem is not easy, uh, not difficult. Um, basically, it's about a jar that the speaker placed uh, on the wilderness of Tennessee. And Tennessee is a place uh, filled with mountains and trees. Okay, so it's a place uh, less cultivated, you know, to rep uh, represent for the poet the wilderness. Okay, and uh, so let me read it, and you can. Uh, when, when you read, uh, when you listen to my reading, uh, make sure that you pay attention to the iambic rhythm. You know, uh, it's mostly iambic, uh, but then uh, the parts what I'm, uh, that I mark, uh, especially when uh, wilderness is mentioned, you know, we get uh, the uh, dactyl, which is the third yin bu, the third yin bu, dactyl, and then the first yin is in the first yin. Okay. 啊，烟北不要忘记是两音节的一个音部，然后重音是在第二个音节。好，I placed a jar in Tennessee and round it was upon the hill. It made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. The wilderness rose up to it and sprawled around, no longer wild. The jar was round upon the ground and tall and overpoured in air. It took dominion everywhere. The jar was gray and bare. It did not give off bird or bush like nothing else in Tennessee. So you, you see the general rhythm, uh, and then, um, but then uh, it made a slovenly wilderness, slovenly wilderness, uh, you know, um, uh, stand out because out of the, the the regular rhythm because wilderness is a, an element in this poem different from the jar. Okay, and the jar here, the poem is kind of abstract, uh, showing how the jar produces some impact on the whole surrounding, okay? Um, uh, this jar is uh, a kind of uh, jar like this. It is round, okay, and just uh, a, a, a kind of uh, artifice. So the jar is placed upon a hill, and the emphasis is on the roundness of the jar, okay? And also, um, uh, the, so the round here, is uh, presented twice, and round it was, and the jaw was round, and um, bec also the ang sound is repeated because upon the ground, and uh, then the wilderness surrounds the jaw. Okay, so basically um, there is this uh, effect of the repetition of the ang sound to show how wilderness respond to the jaw, to its influence. Okay, uh, so let me read it. It made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. So uh, then the the, uh, the question is why does uh, the jar have this influence on the wilderness to make the wilderness surround that hill as if the jar on the hill is the center, is the center of all the surroundings. Okay, so that's one question. And then let's see, uh, so this is the first stanza. The second stanza shows uh, the wilderness action the action of the wilderness, that it rose up to the jar, it sprawled around it, no longer wild. So the wilderness becomes domesticated, no longer no, wilden, wild, okay? And then uh, again, the description of the jar, the jar was round upon the ground and tall of a porting air. Of a poor means posture, a very uh, elegant posture in the air, okay? It took dominion everywhere. So the jaw dominates. The jaw on the hill dominates everything. But the jaw was gray and bare. It did not t give a bird or bush. So here, uh, up to it, the line, it took dominion everywhere. The jaw seems to be significant, uh, also central, uh, influential. But then uh, in the last three lines, uh, the speaker admits another aspect of the jar, which is uh, that the jar is non-productive. Uh, unlike nature, you know, which is ongoing, productive, and uh, living, you know, the jar itself is dead. Okay, so here at the end, uh, it says that it did not give off. Give off means produce. Give off uh, bird or bush, like nothing else in Tennessee. You know, so the roundness and surroundness of the whole poem is also suggested by the repetition of the tendency, you know, in the beginning and at the end. But bas and basically, uh, I think the poem 
uh, shows uh, how uh, the jar has a kind of organizing influence to the surrounding. Okay, like art, you know, if you present a painting of uh, like a mountain or a tree, you know, it gives an interpretation of the uh, of the mountain or the tree. It offers some kind of organization. It frames uh, the scenery and produce meanings out of the scenery. But then, you know, uh, nature itself is alive. But paintings or literature, you know, they are not alive unless they are read. They are talked about and they are thought about by us. You know, we readers bring them back to life. Uh, work of art itself is that. Okay, so I think that's uh, the basic idea. And make sure that you pay attention to the, 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 the rhyme. You know, like uh, Musée des Beaux-Arts, it's not consistently rhymed. Okay, but where the jar is mentioned, it is rhymed. Like a uh, hill and hill, round, air, where, bear. No, this is where the jar is mentioned. When wilderness is mentioned, no, it's not uh, rhyme. There is there are no rhyme. Okay, so again, the, in this poem, like in Musée des Beaux-Arts, there is this uh, opposition between the overall iambic meter and occasional dactyl or other meters, okay? And then um, the rhyme lines versus the unrhymed un lines to suggest uh, a kind of opposition between nature and art. I'm kind of rushing through uh, to the end. Um, I'm sorry I don't have time to uh, show you Vincent, but I guess uh, some of you should know it. And uh, online, and also if you follow the links, uh, you can get some uh, examples, yeah. Okay, let's take a quiz now. Okay, uh, let's start. What does this mean in uh, this is all you have on in Earth? Uh, this means uh, all the interactions implied uh, in the previous part. Okay, this is all you have on, and you cannot be dispossessed of those uh, interactions. Next one. I guess uh, this has to do with the debate I had with uh, Rap Weber about uh, what a snake means. Uh, there's no clue to show that the snake is evil in this point. But when S Weber says that uh, the snake is, uh, uh, it's possible for the snake to attack, I think uh, it's plausible. It's a plausible interpretation, but not to say that the snake is like Satan. You know, there's no biblical implication in this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, choose the wrong one. So those of you who chose number one and two, did you get my question wrong? Uh, yes, uh, there are a lot of explosive sounds in the first four lines. You know, uh, in the second four lines, uh, mellifluous sound effects and uh, uh, open vowels, yes. Okay, number four. It doesn't describe the painting techniques or skills. You know, uh, remember I told you about the rhyme? You know, there are rhymed, uh, some lines which are rhymed, uh, a lot of un un unrhymed lines. Okay, so its language is de deliberately unpoetic. Okay, uh, let's move on, the, la the last question. The number, the, the jar and the surrounding, they are interacting, right, with each other. So this uh, nature ra ra rose up to it and surrounds it. Okay, so um, uh, the jar does not destroy nature. The jar only, as, as an example or as a symbol of art, you know, the jar only organized nature. Okay, and then uh, it's not free verse. Remember I told you that it's pretty much uh, iambic and that there are, there are rhymes in some lines, so it's not free verse, okay? 